In this video lesson you will learn to assemble a details driven drop down menu system which may be the easiest way to create drop down menu systems when the new HTML5 details and summary elements become standardized. The HTML5 details and summary tags do not yet work in all browsers. Out of the four most popular browsers it only works in Google Chrome so far. So that is where we will experiment with it for now and we can surely use it for website development when these two elements become standardized and work in all browsers and that should happen very soon. This is the finished product of what you'll be learning to assemble. As some of you know the HTML5 details element is specifically geared to have native open and close behavior for the content that is inside of it. This native behavior removes the need for us to have CSS or JavaScript code in place to make that kind of magic happen. It happens natively for this details element. The main menu item is the details element and the summary element is actually what makes a label for that details element so you can write whatever you want in here. I wrote menu item 1 within my summary element and that gives me an ability to label the details element and then down here these are just regular links using the A tag, the little link tag. It's very simple to construct and there's no complicated scripting. Now since it's not a very complex type of thing, I'm not going to spend a lot of time explaining stuff. I'm just going to go straight into my bare bones HTML5 web document and in the body element, I'm going to set up a div element, go down a couple of lines, close it off, and inside the div element, I'm going to give that an ID that's equal to left menu, and that will help us target this div with our CSS. Now inside of left menu, I'll hit space twice just to properly indent, and then I'll put my details element, my first details element. Go down a couple of lines, make sure I close that details element. Now the first thing I want inside of this details element is a summary element. Now what this summary element does, it allows you to label the details element. Otherwise it has a default label. So I'm going to type in menu item 1. I'm going to make sure I close my summary element. Now right underneath and the this element, this uh, A tag, or all of these A tags, will be siblings of the summary element. So they'll all be children of the details element. You can see that the A element is not inside of the summary element. It's a sibling of that element. These are both children of the details element. So let's put A href is equal to pound sign. And you can put whatever web address, destination, whatever page you need to navigate to right there. And let's give this a label, subcategory A. Now you just take that go down one line, paste another and another, and you make this one say B, this one say C. Now at this point you might want to look at what you have so you can render this to your favorite browser. If you're in Dreamweaver you can just press F12. So you see I have the details element here and if I click on it, it shows me the content that's hidden inside of it, which are the three A elements here. You can't see the summary element because the summary element is only designed to give a label to the details element. Let me show you what I mean. If I remove that, let me comment that summary element out, press F12, it just says the default label for the details element, which is the word details. But if I put the summary element back into place, you can see that it says whatever I want it to say. And I'm going to show you how to remove that arrow and design these things to look like buttons. So you can make the summary element itself look like a button and you can make the subcategories look like buttons. Now at this point let's just grab that the whole details element with all of its children and let's go right under that put another one under that another one and under that another one. So now you can see I have four of them so let's change this one to say two this one to say three this one to say four and if you want you can make sure that these have different lengths so they're not all exactly the same. Make this D, this E, and then maybe put just two there. There you go. And take a peek at what you have now. This is menu item one, menu item two, three, and four. I'm going to collapse it. Now let's go up into the style element of our document. And the first thing we're going to do is target the body element. This way we can just set its margin property to zero pixels because we don't want any marginal space around the page. And that's optional. Now what we want to do is target this left menu. So we'll take that, control C, and we'll put the pound sign, left menu, 
open our curly brace, go down a few lines and close the curly put the closing curly brace right there. Now the two properties I'm going to give my div left menu here are width of 15% and min width, which is the minimum width that it could be, is 150 pixels. And that shows you how to set up your width dynamically so it can stretch to any screen size or viewer device. And then when the user shrinks their screen or if they resize their browser window or whatever, the minimum width the menu can be is 150 pixels. And left menu is just the div that holds all of your detail elements. Now in the CSS, if you want to target those detail elements, you can do so like this. And this CSS definition or this rule will target all of the details elements. But for this example, I'm not going to have any properties in that. I just wanted to show you if you have the need to target each detail element, you can do so with this rule. Now the next thing we need in place, let me open the HTML and you can see inside of each details element we have summary element. So let's go ahead and target that with our CSS. So we'll have left menu and go inside of left menu and as a child of left menu are all the detail elements and then you can target all of the summary elements that are child elements of the detail elements you see and we want to make those cursor pointer that way the little mouse arrow turns into the little hand signal with the one finger like the little pointer and that's what you want if it's going to be a button and we give it a background of whatever color we want in my case it was a light blue margin of six pixels all the way around it that way they're not all crowded on top of each other and a padding of 8 pixels that way the words inside of the button have some space around them alright so since the summary element is acting as our button our main category buttons we're gonna use a hover state which is a pseudo selector in CSS so you can just put colon hover for any element and that will change its design on the page when the user's mouse hovers over it so we'll just change its background from the light blue here to a gray color here and you can have any colors you want and actually you can use button graphics if you want you can ha have uh, lead to a URL for the background property and just have button graphics if you like use either GIFs or JPEGs but I'm just going to use colors for this quick example now let's take a look at what we have so you see now we haven't even targeted the little a elements within the details element and we'll get to those in a second in the CSS and those will come out looking like buttons as well now what we want to do is get rid of this arrow you can either keep that arrow there which is a nice feature or I'll show you how to remove it right now so we'll target left menu and inside of left menu details elements we're gonna target the details marker and you can see I have the WebKit prefix here so when this is all standardized you would just put details marker and take the WebKit prefix off and you set that to display none now if you go to your page and you refresh it see those little arrows went away but maybe let's keep them there because they're a cool little feature now what we're gonna do is target all of these little a elements the little links that are inside of the detail elements so let's go in our CSS and put in left menu and inside of left menu details inside of all the details each a element we're gonna give it a display of block that way it goes all the way across the same length as the uh, the parent button and let me show you what I'm talking about we look at it now you see how it goes all the way across here to the edge that's a cool little feature you might want or else they'll stop wherever the word stops the length of the button you might want it to extend all the way through the menu and then we give it text decoration of none so they're not underlined by default give the text color font size make it 13 and your marginal space now what I did was I gave it a left margin of 18 pixels that way it cuts way in and you can see that it's indented into its parent button which is something that will help your users stay focused on which category they're in and the rest of the marginal space just make sure that they're not all on top of each other now what we'll do is give those a hover so let's see what else is in there background color that's simple and then they have a padding so the words inside of those little buttons aren't so crammed into the container and your margin if you're gonna use shorthand like this it's top right bottom left top right
bottom, left. Top, right, bottom, left. Don't forget. Now, all we need is a pseudo selector for the hover state of those little buttons. We change the background color on them when the user's mouse hovers over them. And we can change their font weight to bold if we choose to. So now let's take a look and see what we have. There we go. Color changes. And the font changes to a weight of bold. And I'll show you one more little trick. Under that, if you want to target the uh, before pseudo selector, so on each of the A elements, the little buttons inside, you can put content that leads that element. And all I did was put an arrow and then a space. So you really wouldn't want to use that. You would want to use a URL graphic. Let me show you what I mean now. If I open the menu, you see that little arrow and the space right there in front of them. So you can do something like that. You can use any uh, HTML symbol character that you want. You really wouldn't want to put this character in place there. I was just showing you what it does. You can do that, something simple like that. Or you can take this and put a content URL. So you just put URL, open close parentheses, and within here is where you say my little marker.jpg. But I'll just leave mine like that. But you guys know that you can use an image there in place of that if you want. So that's about it. I told you it was easy. and It's just HTML5 and CSS, and it has nice functionality, you see? You can have a relatively small menu with your main categories that lead to all of the subcategories that are within the main category. And like I said, these can be vertical, like mine is, or they can be horizontal going across the page this way. And the menu will still drop underneath it. You just have to make sure your CSS is set up right so it doesn't push all of the page content underneath it down. And that's very easy to do by positioning. Now, there are a million different ways you can design this thing, make it any kind of button style that you want, and make it behave any way that you want using different CSS uh, selectors and different properties. And don't feel limited to using the format that I have here. Go crazy with your creativity. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed that lesson on HTML5 and CSS easy peasy drop down menus.